So I reflect a lot on that question. And interestingly, another question I reflect a lot upon now is, now that we've got this crop of students in college, the, I reflect on the question of, you know, how do we you know, keep them there and get them through? How do we ensure that they have persistence? Um, so I think a lot about this. And one of the things I've come up with is, you know, when I was growing up, I was given swords and shields. And I think that that's what we give our students at Urban Prep. I think that that's what many of you, perhaps unbeknownst to yourselves, are giving your kids at your schools as well. The sword is this high quality education that's based on a rigorous curriculum that will allow students to fight intellectual battles with the best of them. The shield, which arguably is more important, is the self-confidence, self-possession, and self-awareness necessary for a student to defend himself in an unfriendly world. These swords and shields, in my opinion, are the essential ingredients for successfully educating every child. I think we all know, uh, or at least we have a good idea about how we deliver these swords. How do we you know, create you know, high quality instruction? You know, it, they're no-brainers. I mean, I was on a panel one time, and, you know, it was very funny. I'm so articulate. I was on a panel, and, you know, they go through this big thing about, you know, education, and you have to have more time in uh, school, and, you know, you want to have a rigorous curriculum, and you want to have, you know, really good, high-quality assessments. And the, and the moderator turned to me and said, well, Tim, what do you think about this? And I said, duh. <laughs> we know this stuff, right? We know that if you extend the school day, if you extend the school year, if you give students more time, more butts in seats, right, with high quality, good teachers in front of them, you know you're gonna end up with a better educated student. At Urban Prep, as you saw from that piece, we spend an extra two hours a day in school. And that translates into an extra year over the cor course of four years at Urban Prep. Clearly, that makes a difference. So we know the things we should be doing in order to improve instruction, have the kind of professional development for the teachers that makes sense. Make sure that you are delivering instruction in a way that's meaningful to the student. Make, you don't have to have an Afrocentric curriculum if you're teaching a black kid, but you can have a culturally relevant approach to how you're teaching Shakespeare. The shields, however, are a bit more elusive. How do you create self-confidence and self-possession and self-awareness in a student? That's a really, really difficult one. And it's also just as difficult to measure it, whether or not you're doing it. At Urban Prep, I think that our students develop these shields thanks to our school culture. I mentioned a couple times that Good Morning America piece, culture. It's a big thing for us. School culture, school culture, school culture. The school culture at Urban Prep is grounded in four things. Respect, responsibility, ritual, and relationships. Respect, responsibility, ritual, and relationships. We create an environment in which students are responsible by having a student code of conduct, we set expectation for expectations for behavior, communicate those expectations, provide students with the means to meet those expectations, and hold students accountable to those expectations. Respect, another key element to the urban prep school culture. In a society in which kids kill kids because they bumped into each other, because someone stepped on their gym shoes, tennis shoes, because someone dissed them, which we often forget is short for disrespect, we felt it was essential, essential that at Urban Prep we made sure there was an environment in which students felt respected so that they could then respect each other and most important, respect themselves. There are many ways we foster this uh, sense of respect within the school. One of the ways is we only use surnames. We do not refer to our young men as John, Tom, Frank. We refer to them as Mr. Smith, Mr. Jones, Mr. Johnson. It is amazing, amazing to me how just having an adult 
refer to a child as sir, as mister, can profoundly impact and change the way that child views himself. Mind you, at Urban Prep, we're dealing with a student population that has been called every name under the sun. Endangered species, failure, criminal, loser, and those are just the ones that don't involve profanity. Calling a young man, sir, mister, immediately sets the tone for the relationship and allows that young man to not only view the adult differently, but view himself differently as well. The third element of the urban prep school culture is ritual. If we expect our students to behave differently, we have to provide them with an environment which is, in fact, different. We expect them to learn differently. We have to provide them with an environment which is different. We want them to live differently. We have to provide them with an environment that is different. So one way we do that at Urban Prep is through rituals. So I get in trouble a little bit when I say this, but you know, I, I, hopefully you know, our good friend from the Department of Education won't go and report me to our other good friend, Arnie Duncan. But you know what we've got to do? We have to create gangs in our schools. I'm not talking about the kind of gangs that go out and steal and break the law and do dr deal drugs. I'm talking about the kind of gangs that are positive and supportive. Think more like you know, what fraternities and sororities at their best do. And if you look at a gang or if you look at a fraternity or a sorority, you will always see rituals there. Rituals, I'm an alpha. Things that we do as an alpha that are different than what other people do. Things that are uniquely part of our fraternity. Same thing at our schools. We can create environments based on ritual that are unique to our school so that a student recognizes when they walk in that door that they're part of something special, something different, and we can have a different kind of expectation of them. Every day at Urban Prep, we start our school day with something we call community. And frankly, this is not, I'm sure, very different from what many of you are doing in your schools. We take everyone and put them in the gym. Teachers, students, administrators, everyone. We call it community with a capital C. All of us together, we stand there and we celebrate the great things that students are doing. Our normal uniform is a uh, black blazer, khaki pants, a white uh, button-down collar shirt and a red tie. During community every week, we acknowledge students who have been exceptional by giving them a gold tie, and they become our students of the week. When a senior is admitted to a four-year college, we exchange their red tie for a red and gold striped tie. So the ties you saw in that Good Morning America clip those ties were the red and gold senior ties. You would think we were giving them a million dollars each. They are so eager to get those gold ties and to get those red and gold stripe ties, so eager, in fact, that our first graduating class, they were all admitted to college by the time April rolled around. Our second graduating class were all admitted to college by February. And I tell you, there are a lot of hardworking adults, but I bet you it had more to do with the fact that these guys wanted to beat the class before them and get those ties than anything that we were doing internally to push the student to get, complete their application sooner. This is a ritual that makes the students feel like they are part of something special and allows them to excel, to exceed the expectations that even we have created for them. Where there's a yin, there's a yang. Where there's a good, there's a bad. So not only do we utilize community to celebrate students who have done great work, but we use it as a time to admonish 
behavior that needs to be improved. 